Today we are diving into something super important, the different types of cloud computing. Terms like IaaS, PaaS, SaaS might sound confusing at first. You might be thinking, wait, what's the difference? When should I use what? Well, by the end of this video, all your questions will be answered. You'll finally understand what each type really means, how companies actually use them in the real world, and some simple examples that make it super easy to remember. So stick around, because by the end of this video, you'll feel like a cloud computing pro. Let's jump right in. Imagine, you just got a new job abroad. You're super excited about this. New city, new opportunities, but also a big problem. You need to find a place to stay. Your company made your life a little bit easy. They give you 14 days of free accommodation in a hotel with food included, laundry, room service, basically everything is taken care of. So you book the flights and you just landed in a new country for your new job. Long flight, you're tired, you just want to crash. Your company has already booked you into a nice hotel. You check in, drop your bags, stretch a bit and everything is ready for you. Hungry? Just head down to the hotel restaurant. Dirty clothes? Hand them over to the laundry service. Room messy? Call reception and housekeeping shows up. Basically, with one phone call, everything you need is taken care of. You don't have to worry about cooking, cleaning or setting up anything. You just enjoy your stay. So the next day, after a good night's sleep at the hotel, you're like, okay, time to find my own place. You call up a couple of property agents and within minutes, your WhatsApp starts buzzing with options. Photos, videos, rent details, everything. After scrolling through a bunch, you finally decide to go and check out two of them in person. So the first house you go to see, it's a completely empty apartment. No furniture, no Wi-Fi, nothing. Just four walls, electricity and water connection. The rent, cheaper of course. And the best part, you get full freedom to set it up exactly how you want. You can buy your own furniture, decorate the way you like, make it totally your vibe. Sure, it's going to be a bit of a headache in the beginning, running around for a sofa, bed, fridge, internet. But once you set it up, it's a pretty sweet deal overall. Then you go to your second option, a fully furnished apartment. Of course, the rent here is higher than the empty one. But man, the convenience is on another level. The sofa is already there, the bed set up, kitchen is ready, Wi-Fi is installed. You literally just pack your bags, walk in and start living. No headaches of buying stuff or setting things up. But here for catch. Since it's already furnished, you don't have much freedom to change things around. You can't just throw out the couch or remodel the kitchen. Because hey, it's part of the deal. So yeah, super convenient but less flexible. So now let's connect all this back to the world of cloud computing. Remember when you first landed in the city and just checked into the hotel? Everything was taken care of for you. Food, laundry, cleaning, no extra effort from your side. That's software as a service. Everything is ready-made, you just log in and use it. Now, remember that empty apartment, the one with the cheaper rent but full freedom to do whatever you want? That's infrastructure as a service. You get the basics, the four walls, electricity, water, that's it. Everything else, that's on you. You have to bring in the furniture, set up the kitchen, decorate the place, get Wi-Fi, basically turn it into a home. The cloud gives you the foundation but you're in charge of the apartment. Infrastructure as a service means you're renting the raw stuff like servers, storage and networking. You still need to install and manage your own software on top of that. And then there's the fully furnished department, the one with the higher rent but way more convenient to move into. That's platform as a service. The furniture is already there, the kitchen is set up, Wi-Fi is ready. You literally just bring your suitcase and start living. Super easy, but you don't get as much freedom to change things around because it's already set up for you. Alright, let's make SaaS super simple. Take Gmail for example, classic SaaS. You don't go and install some heavy Gmail software on your laptop. Nope. You just open your browser, log in and you're sending and receiving emails. Google is the one hosting Gmail, handling all the updates, security, storage, basically all the hard stuff. You, you just use it. That's the whole point of software as a service. Now, here's where some people get confused. You might be thinking, wait, but I did install Gmail on my phone or I installed Netflix on my phone. Well, here's the catch. That thing you installed is not the actual software, it's just an app. Think of it like a shortcut. That app's only job is to connect you to the real Gmail or Netflix running on the cloud servers. Why Gmail is not IaaS? 
Well, IaaS is basically renting raw servers, storage, and networks. You get the foundation, but you still have to install software, manage updates, handle security, and make it all work yourself. With Gmail, you don't get servers. You don't install email software. You don't manage storage, security, or updates. Google does all that for you. You just log in and start sending emails. So Gmail is SaaS because you're using the finished product. Okay, so if Gmail isn't IaaS, could it be PaaS? Remember, PaaS gives you a platform to build your own apps. Now with Gmail, you don't build anything. You don't deploy your own email app. You just use Gmail to send and receive emails. So Gmail isn't a platform for building apps. It's the final application itself. Let's take another example, Microsoft Office. Back in the day, if you wanted something like Microsoft Office 2003, here's what you did. You actually bought the CD or license, installed it on your computer, and it only worked on that machine. If Microsoft released an update or patch, guess what? You had to manually install it. All the responsibility was on you. That's what we call traditional software, not software as a service. It lived on your computer, and you had to babysit it with updates and upgrades. But now, fast forward to Office 365, totally different story. You don't need to install bulky software. You just open your browser, log in, and start working on Word, Excel, or PowerPoint directly online. All the heavy lifting, updates, storage, security is handled by Microsoft. You just use the service. That's software as a service in action. It's basically the same office you know, but way smarter, easier, and living in the cloud instead of being locked to your computer. Now let's look at a very practical example of infrastructure as a service. Uh, you've just joined a big company as a data engineer. Life's good, your company has been super kind and they hand you this shiny new MacBook Pro. Looks great, feels premium and you're all set to dive into your project. Your project task is to build some cool dashboards and Power BI. You know Power BI inside out, no stress. But here's the twist. To build Power BI dashboards, you need Power BI desktop software which is only available for Windows as of September 2025. There's still no version for Mac users. So what do you do now? Do you go back to IT and say, hey, can you also give me a Windows laptop? That's not really practical and not happening for sure. Here's what your company does instead. They give you an Azure virtual machine. Think of it like a Windows computer sitting in the cloud and Power BI desktop is already installed there. You just open Chrome on your Mac, log into that virtual machine, and suddenly your Mac feels like it's running Windows. You open Power BI Desktop, build your dashboards, and everything works smoothly. And this right here is a simple example of infrastructure as a service. Instead of giving you new hardware, your company just rents the infrastructure from Azure. Easy, flexible, and problem solved. Now you might ask, why isn't this software as a service? Software as a service means you don't install or manage the software. You just use it directly over the internet. Gmail, Netflix, or Google Docs. You open it and it just works. You're using Power BI Desktop, which is a software installed inside that virtual machine. You still have to manage the software, save your files, maybe even handle updates inside the VM. Azure is just giving you the infrastructure, the virtual machine, not a ready-to-use app. So, it's infrastructure as a service, IaaS, not software as a service. You are renting the foundation, but the software itself is something you control and interact with directly. You might wonder, could this be platform as a service? Platform as a service gives you a ready-made platform to build your own apps. Azure isn't giving you a platform to develop an app, it's just giving you a computer in the cloud. So, it's not platform as a service, it's purely infrastructure as a service, IaaS. Infrastructure, you control, not a managed platform. Platform as a service, PaaS, is always the trickiest one to explain because it sits between IaaS and SaaS. Let's see if you can make things crystal clear here. Since we are preparing for GCP Associate Cloud Engineer exam, let's take a product from Google only. Google App Engine is a platform as a service offered by Google Cloud. In simple terms, you just bring your code, like a web app or mobile app, in any of the supported languages like Python, Java, Go, PHP, Node.js, Ruby, and .NET. And hit deploy, and App Engine will create the infrastructure required for your app in a couple of minutes. Google automatically provides the servers, storage, networking, and scaling. If suddenly 10,000 people start using your app, Google App Engine will scale it up automatically without you touching a thing. As a developer or app owner, when you use Google App Engine, you only pay for what you actually use. So if your website has low traffic, your cost stays low. 
But if your traffic grows, you pay a bit more. Simple as that. The best part? Google takes care of the back-end heavy lifting, so you can stay focused on what really matters, building and improving your web app. Now you might ask, why isn't this SaaS? SaaS, software as a service means you don't build anything yourself. You just use a ready-made app like Gmail or Netflix. In our case with Google App Engine, you are building and deploying your own application. Google provides the platform, but the app itself is yours. You control the logic, the features, the database, everything inside your app. So it's not SaaS because you're not just using a finished application. You are creating and managing one. Then why this is not IaaS? Infrastructure as a service means you get raw infrastructure, servers, storage, and networking. and rest you have to set up everything by yourself install the os runtime software manage scaling update security everything in our case with google app engine you don't manage the servers or infrastructure google automatically handles all that for you you only focus on your app code so it's not ias because the infrastructure is fully managed for you and not by you this is classic pass platform as a service the platform takes care of the back end you just focus on your product i have done my best to break down the different types of cloud computing and hopefully it's much clearer now so you can easily tell whether a product falls under ias pass or saas if something still feels confusing no worries just rewind or jump to the parts you want to revisit i have added time stamps in the description to make it easier for you remember these are the building blocks of cloud computing and getting the basics right is super important That's all for today's video. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. It really supports what we're doing here. Stay curious and I'll catch you in the next one.